Hi, Sue. Wish you might. Hello, Latisa, how are you? Aloha, Jimmy. Hi, Anika. Welcome back, everybody. Boy, it's been a little bit of a break. I hope you all had wonderful holidays and uh, um, were able to at least meet with your families virtually. Uh, that's what I did. Um, hello, Violetta. Hello, Giovanni. Ciao. I'm good, thank you. I hope you're good, too. Hello, Valerie. Yeah, it's a great start to 2021. At least a happy New Year's to you, too. Hello, Misha. Hello, Johnny. Okay, well, welcome, everybody. It's good to, good to see all of you. I thought what I would do today is um, just start by going over the Primatex. So I brought, I'm going to just, I uh, hope I don't give you a whiplash when I do this. Let me see if I can do this. I may not be able to do it. Let me see. I brought all of the Primatex out with me. Let's see, there they are. Those are all the Primatex. And I'll be showing you the Primatex. So I'll be showing those to you. I'll show those to you and um, we'll paint as many of them out as we can. What I really wanted to show you is the granulation of the Primatex. And they're called Primatex because um, I take the massives and we process those massives down into pigment. From pigment, we make the paint. So they, they granulate very, very beautifully. And I'm going to show you that today. I'm also going to show you two synthetics that do it. Um, we have the whole family of lunar colors, but I'm going to show you um, in particular lunar black and I believe lunar blue, just to show you that there are, there are synthetics that will granulate as well. So let me just make sure I pop those out because I want to show you those in particular. They're also quite beautiful. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and we'll go ahead and start. Hello, Jeff from the Netherlands. Hello, Kathleen. Okay, so let me put this down. Okay, so these two I'm going to show you are synthetics. And this is lunar black and this is lunar blue. Um, lunar black is, kind of, is very, very interesting in that it's a single pigment. It's PBK11, P pigment. BK black, so pigment black number 11 is this right here. And by all accounts, it should not granulate because it's a single pigment, all the same size, all the same shape, all the same weight. Um, but the particles are nanoparticles and they repel each other. It's very, very, uh, very, very unique pigment. It's also, if you put yellow on this, for example, um, the black would move away from the yellow, so you'd see the yellow. It's, it's some really neat characteristics, and I showed you last time um, about PBK11. And then I also have here um, the Lunar Blue. Now, the Lunar Blue um, uses uh, PBK11. It uses some of the, the same black, um, and then it uses pigment blue number 15. And you see this, this really kind of cool granulation. So very, very interesting. They are very, very beautiful. And there's a whole family of lunar colors, which we'll go over the whole family, not today, uh, but I'll go over the whole family with you. When we start doing families, for example, I'll walk you through the quinacridones, the pyrroles, the perilines, the cadmiums. We'll do it by family. Uh, we'll go over it. So Heather says she uses lunar black all the time. It's a very, very, very popular color. 
just because it's really kind of cool characteristic. I mean, I just, I just really love this. Um, and again, the granulation, the reason I find it so very interesting, it's something, it's an energy that you, you go with it. Um, you, you can't really overpower granulation. You can try, but you don't get the beautiful, um, this beauty that you get in, that you get in here. This camera right now is working really well today. I have no idea why it's doing that. Let's see if we can really mess it up. Okay, so that's the lunar colors. Wow, Kristen says she's successfully collected all the Primatech colors. Way to go, Kristen. So we're going to start looking at all the um, Primatechs. There's 34. So there's 36 Primatex, and we'll be looking at these today. Right here, there's 36 of them. Um, I did want to wet some of them out, so if we wet them out, we're probably only going to go through about half. So what I might do is just go through half of them today, and that way I can uh, we can wet some out. We can actually see some of the um, what they look like wet. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and start? Hello, George. So George is on with us today, um, as is Giovanni. Um, George is a master of the Primatex. So if you have questions artistically how they work, Giovanni and George would certainly be the ones to answer that. Okay, so let me show you some of them. And then I'll save the tubes over here, so. This is serpentine. And serpentine comes from Australia. It comes from Tasmania. If you've ever been to Australia or Tasmania, Tasmania is absolutely, I think it's one of the, the prettiest places on earth I've been to. It's very, very, very beautiful. And this is the mineral itself. And you can see, I'm going to try to hold it up here. You can kind of see some of that, some of that, purple, that violet purple in there. Let me see here. I guess I kind of see it right in, in in here. See that? And it's heavy, so it, it falls down into the the valley of the um, rough paper. So you can kind of see it. And that's what causes it to have this, this beautiful granulation. And that's this right here. It's serpentine which is a Primatech. Okay, so we're going to go over this one today. This is a very nice one. This is Burnt Tiger's Eye. Um, so Tiger's Eye, what we do with the Tiger's Eye is So this is the regular tiger's eye right here. Regular tiger's eye. Regular tiger's eye. That's what it looks like. And this is the burnt tiger's eye. So we take the regular tiger's eye and we put it to a furnace, put it up to about 700 degrees and we change the oxidation state, which then comes into this, this the um, burnt or the reddish. And that's the difference between the two. They're both tiger's eye, just one has been put into a furnace. Okay, so we'll look at both of those today. Put those back. Here's another one that's very interesting. This is called Perprite. Perprite. 
um just so you know, i t e, when it has the i t e ending, i t e, perp right um appetite hematite it means mineral i t e means mineral okay and there's the perp right and you can kind of see you can see the the heavy um purple and that's what causes this color right here and you can see the granulation yes the the tiger's eye the regular one looks very gold and that's because this is one of my my specimens, and it's been polished. So they, their crystals are very beautiful um, when they're polished. And this is a semi-precious stone. Um, it can be made into rings. It can be made into cabochons to wear on your neck. You've probably seen this um, many, many times in many, many places in the world being worn. Okay, so that's perperite. So here's another one, and I'm going to have you guess for 30 seconds what you think it is. What we're talking about is right here, this right here, and this is because this particular mineral right here is in, ma it's in matrix, so right here, and here it is as just a single crystal. And if I had a light, I could show you through here, and it would look somewhat kind of like a, an orange kind of color. So what do you think it is? see. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you what it is. It is garnet. So this is a garnet. And these come from all over the world. India has a huge amount of them. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. Nope, this is actually, it looks like, you're right, it looks like a hematite because it's so dark here on the screen, but it's actually a garnet. And these are absolutely beautiful. And again, they're semi-precious. So very, very beautiful. Yeah, hematite's a good guess. Yes, yeah, so if you guessed garnet, you were right on the money. If you guessed hematite, um, the way this camera looks, I would have guessed it too. Okay, so we'll play with that one. This one's very interesting. And this is... This is a natural black. This is a natural black. So you can see it's a crystal. Here are the faces of the crystal. And here's the termination of the crystal. Right, so you can see it's been terminated. Okay, and this is black tourmaline. Right here, black tourmaline. And so it's a, it's a natural and has that beautiful granulation. So different than our synthetic you know, there's the synthetic here's lunar black which is a synthetic and here's black tourmaline which is a natural pretty neat okay. so we'll look at that one now I'm asked quite often hey John what what's the, what's one of the most expensive What's one of the most expensive uh, minerals or most expensive pigments? And it would be this one right here. This is really expensive. And this is rhodonite. And that's because rhodonite is a semi-precious stone. It absolutely makes breathtakingly beautiful jewelry. So um, I get end pieces that they can't use, they being the people that want to manufacture um, jewelry. And then what I do is I get rid of all this material that's unusable for me, and I just keep this right here. So it takes quite a bit of it to be able to do that. Um, what does it mean when the crystal has been terminated? It just, it refers to this right here. It just refers to, you can see the crystal here, and it's, it's growing from here up. It's growing from here up. And then it terminates right here. You can see the top of it where it's been terminated. So it's it stopped right here. Now over, if this was never removed and there was still a, um, a water source and mineral, et cetera, it, it could keep on growing. 
but here's where it's terminated. It has stopped. Okay, so rhodonite. So we will try rhodonite. I'm always asked about this one. This is Sleeping Beauty, and this is what Sleeping Beauty looks like. So Sleeping Beauty comes from the Sleeping Beauty Mine out of Arizona. So the name of the mine is called Sleeping Beauty. And make sure I put that over here so we can play with it. And then this one, also from Arizona, is Kingman. Kingman. And Kingman comes from the Kingman, Arizona mine. So from the Sleeping Beauty mine and from the Kingman mine. And so what's associated around the ground, what kind of other um, elements, gives you the different shades. So here you can see it's quite blue, and here it's quite, quite green. Okay. So we will look at those two. Now here's one, you can probably guess what this is. You can kind of see the sparkle. It has, uh, has mica. It has quartz and mica in it. So this is lapis, lapis, lapis lazuli. And people are going to ask me, John, you know, this, this, this is so blue, and yet this is um, like a baby blue. Well, this is this pigment is about 80% pure. Um, and it's about $4,000 a kilo at 80%. To make it really, really blue, it, it cost, it probably cost about 90%, would probably cost about um, between 20 and 40, $20,000 a pound. It, it would be unbelievably expensive. But it comes from this right here, and this right here is um, Afghan lapis. So, Lapis comes from Afghanistan. It can be found in many places, but the majority of it's found in Afghanistan and also in Chile. Chilean lapis and Afghan lapis. If you wanted really, really, really blue, then, you know, using the synthetics, um, the French ultramarine and the ultramarine, they're the synthetic form of lapis, and they would be that super, super beautiful, vibrant, um, vibrant blue. Very, 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 very beautiful. Uh, but if you want to use real lapis at 80%, this is what it looks like. It has, it has, it's blue. Um, you are using real lapis. I'm asked, well, you know, in the museums, etc., it's so blue. Yes, and it was done by um, the church back in that day. It was done by very, very wealthy people, or it was done by countries. Um, back in those days, when you see those beautiful, gorgeous blue robes made from lapis, Lapis was the same price as gold. So it just, what it showed was um, extreme wealth. So very, very beautiful mineral. And we will look at that today. Let me show you another one. This right here, I really like this one. This is Piemontite. Piemontite. It's a very, very, it's a, it's a very interesting mineral. It's a very beautiful color. It has really great granulation. So we'll try that one out. I have them all, um, but let me let me reach over here. This one, and let's look at this one, and let's look at this one, okay. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. That's not quite half, but okay, so that's piemontite. This right here is green appetite. Green appetite. There we go. It's an unbelievable granulating color. Just really, really beautiful. High, high granulation. This is what it looks like. This is green appetite. Again, a terminated crystal. It's been beat up so that there's no value in it. Um, but it's just it's just great to have as a sample to show people. You can see that the faces of it and then the termination. So there we go, green appetite. We'll go ahead and we'll look at that one. This right here, it's very, very heavy. Um, it looks like it came from the from the moon. What do you think that is? Very heavy, very, very dense. What do you think it is? Hello, Angela. Hello, Ethel. Hello, Stella. Any ideas? I'll show you kind of what it looks like. I'll hide the name. That's kind of what it looks like. There's that really kind of interesting granulation. Iron. So Nikki, that's right. Debbie, that's right. So good guessers. Yep, it's hematite. So this is hematite. Hematite genuine. And so um, it's not lead. <laughs> Tess, we would never, ever, ever, ever use lead. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thought. Um, I would never have my people touch lead. But it, it's iron. That, so that's that's correct. Um, Hematite is an iron ore, so it's hematite. And we have several different types of hematite. We have hematite violet, for example. Um, so I can show you that. And then maybe we'll just, from there, we'll just play a little bit. So let me show you that. And one other one, and then we'll just start playing with some colors. So here's the hematite violet. Hematite, hematite violet. Very different from each other but very pretty. You really get that really interesting granulation up in here. Get that really awesome granulation. So hematite, hematite violet. Okay, so we'll play with, we'll play with those two. And then the, the last one for today, and then we'll do the other, the other ones I'll do the same tomorrow with the same colors, and then next week we'll do the other, um, more than half are left. We'll do those next week, because that way um, you can ask me questions and I can answer the questions. You might want to see how does this color work with that color, which I'd be glad to show you. So this right here is sodalite. And sodalite is just a phenomenal granulator. I mean, you can see it in here. It's just really, really, awesome granulation and again these are drawdowns and the way these work is I take them from my chemist um, every time he's going to do a batch to give it to the floor to process he has to make the paint he has to test it on the um, the um, light machine photos photospectrophotometer um, and these are one to ten so it's one part paint to ten parts distilled water by weight and it's always the same, one to 10, one to 10, and then he does a wash, then he cleans it off, wipes out the brush, does another one to 10 mixture, and then does it this way. So from when it first leaves the brush to where it last comes off the brush. So if this were a straight line, this is where he'd start, and this is where he'd end. Okay, so this is sodalite. Very, very pretty, it's very, very pretty. It's kind of neat these, these minerals have such beautiful color to them. And so sometimes I'm asked, well, John, you know, do you take things like this out of it? Nope, I don't. Nope. It's part of what allows that granulation. Again, if it was all the same size, all the same weight, all the same shape, you wouldn't get granulation, except for lunar black. There's an exception to every rule. So there we go. 
pretty colors. OK, that leaves about half of them that I haven't gone over with you. But what I wanted to do today is also um, wet them out so we can see them wet. So why don't we go ahead and we let's go ahead and do that. Um, so Kristen, next week if I have time, I will, Kristen says, Kyanite plus Moon Glow is amazing for clouds. Next time if I, if I have time, I will do that, or else I'll do it the week after that. I will put both those together so we can see them. And I'm going to mix, put this on the paper. It works a whole lot better when you put it on some type of uh, plastic. Um, or a porcelain, because this paper is going to um, absorb. But for just for us playing around today, it's not really going to matter so much. So let me show you what I'm doing. There it is. And did I tell you what it was? Can you know from looking at it what it is? We have quite a few retail stores, Nikki, that carry um, product in Canada. Um, Opus is one and that's on the west west part, and, and they're all listed on the um, the Daniel Smith site. They're they're fantastic stores. There's quite a few of them. So there we go. That is that is Lunar Black. So we talked about tourmaline. Let's put tourmaline beside it. And these are my samples. These are normally what I would be visiting with you all over the world with. So this is tourmaline. Lunar black tourmaline. You see the tourmaline, I don't know if you can see it on the screen here. I'm in front of me. It 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 has a how to describe that? Um, it looks a little, a little, little yellower than the, than the, um, the lunar black, slightly. Because again, it's a natural. Let's try the. Now, the one thing about the Primatex, I get asked this quite a bit too, they are very, very, very heavy pigment, very heavy. And they will push any free gum arabic to the top. You can just get rid of it. You don't have to, if there's any gum arabic that comes out of anything, you don't have to save it. The pigment will always hold on to the gum arabic and the amount that it needs. So don't ever feel like um, you have to save it. And there we go, that's the green appetite. And you can see how fast that green appetite just granulates. Just it's just awesome. Okay, this is hematite. Hematite violet. 
Do hematites beside those blacks too? Do hematite beside... Okay. All right. I get that. So um, let me do hematite violet, and then I'll do hematite. And see, that's what I'm talking about, the gun arabic. So you, just, you can just get rid of that. And that's because these are been laying in my house. But it's going to wet out. So we'll wet it out. Okay, so that's the hematite violet. You can kind of see that in here. Okay, so now let me do the now let me do the hematite. Hematite, hematite. Oh, I already did the hematite. Black tourmaline. Okay, this is the hematite. There's the hematite. Lunar black, tourmaline, green apatite, hematite violet, hematite. Okay. Yeah, the dot cards are always um, phenomenal to be able to use. Okay, this is going to be sodalite. Sodalite. And let's do this way. I'm putting a lot of a lot of paint down. So you really get that, you really get that granulation. So these are all granulators. They're all granulators. Let me actually put that up here for a second. Today I'm using Stonehenge, Stonehenge paper. Okay, and so right now we have, this is one of my, this is not my favorite color because I think like I said many times, I'm just, I'm really a super, super fan of, of blue and I love the ultramarine is one of my favorites. It's kind of a plain Jane, but I really, really, really love it. Doesn't mean I don't like other ones. So here we go. This is Piemontite. It's a very pretty color. So if you have questions, go ahead and leave them for me, and I will go ahead and read everything that you've said. I'll go back over, because sometimes, while well, I'm really trying to look, um, 
every couple of seconds at what you're typing, there are times where it goes past the top and I miss it. Um, and I will get back to you. And if, if, once we're done, you can always come back and leave a message as well, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so that, this is Piemontite. It's kind of a really kind of cool color. Tiny bit different on the screen than what I'm seeing, but not usually. Okay. This is lapis. It's been a while since I've used these. Since I've used these tubes. And again, I probably should use probably should use a piece of porcelain or plastic. But they are lapis. It's a very it's a very it's a very um, subtle color. If I put this next to a ultramarine, for example, um, ultramarine would dwarf it because ultramarine is is a synthetic. Um, it's probably nine dollars a kilo. But synthetics are tend to be extremely strong, and this is a natural, which which is one of the reasons it makes it kind of unique is that it is a natural. That's what we'll also be going over at some point is what is a natural, um, what is a synthetic. This is perprite. 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 Okay, perprite. Oh, that's neat. So Sandy says she bought Sedona and Yavapai in Arizona after hiking through the rock formations in Prescott and Sedona. Yeah. I used to visit my father um, in Cottonwood and um, it was my travels constantly up into the Grand Canyon, so into um, Yavapai County. So, and we will try, we will look at those um, next week. So this is Serpentine. Very popular serpentine. It's a very pretty color. So serpentine. Tigers, I want to show you side by side. So this is garnet. Garnet's another one that I think is, is a, it's a very pretty color. It's a pretty mineral. You're going to expect a little less granulation in the garnet. The reason you expect less granulation in the garnet is because garnet is very pure. It's one of the, um, there's less other things associated with it. So very, very, I think it's extremely pretty. It's a very pretty color.
Okay, this is going to be rhodonite. Rhodonite. This is fuchsia. I'm going to do fuchsia last because of the, the mica that's in it. Because I'll, I'll always get a question when I use the uh, when I use the um, the fuchsia. The question always becomes um, why does it sparkle? And it sparkles because of the the mica. Yeah, the break was good. Um, I, I think it's good that the uh, here in the U.S. and I looked and uh, heard from Giovanni in in Italy um, that the vaccine is is being uh, given to um, different groups right now. But we have a vaccine, which is nice. It's, boy, I think like many of you, I really want to get out and see people. I want to see my friends. I want to. Um, see you. I'm going to see my family. Um, so I think that's really, really good news on the horizon. I think it's uh, it's all of us different than it was in uh, March of last year. Um, so it's kind of good news. It's, it's neat going into the new year knowing that the end of that tunnel is not too far away and, and we all as a world will be out of this kind of love that okay so this is tiger's eye and burnt tiger's eye and we have we have a little more time i'd like to show you another one i'm going to show you um i'm going to show you the so we have green fuchsite. I'm going to show you red fuchsite. So this is the the red fuchsite. I'm going to show you that. So I'll put this back. And what other one can I show you? This is where I do sparklies. I'm going to also show you the the kyanite because the kyanite again, if I move that around, you can kind of see that those crystals. And see that you can see that it's just it's just it's just loaded so I'm going to show you um, one two of them three of them that have uh, mica in them and the other one will be bronzite uh, but we'll run out of time so let me show you these right here red fuchsia. I don't know if I can show you the card or not so this is the red fuchsite um, card and let me show you. See it? There's the red fuchsite. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's do these five right here.
Hurt Tiger's Eye. Oh, should we get some more space for that? Tiger's Eye. So, this is Burnt Tiger's Eye. Burnt, burnt Tiger's Eye. Boy, it just gets sucked down to that paper so quick. Burnt Tiger's Eye. That's Tiger's Eye. Burnt Tiger's, so burnt, and this is regular. And this is Kyanite. 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 You see that granulation in each one of them. I'm going to uh, this isn't putting big doses of this out. I just want to do a look at mommy table. There we go. All right, and this is, this will be the red and green fuchsite. So red, and then we'll do green. Yeah, we have a, we're, we don't, we don't, the governor here in Washington, so we have governors, um, and the governor has uh, stopped haircuts, um, workout places, and restaurants have to be like 30% or something. Um, that was supposed to be lifted December, now it's, it's, uh, we're then going to go to the 14th, and now it's been until further notice. Okay, this is red fuchsite. And then beside it, we will put the green fuchsite. And it is just, they are just loaded, loaded with mica. So we loaded. You can kind of see it. You can really see it kind of sparkle. The more it dries, the more you'll see that. The more these two dry, the more you'll see it. And you can kind of see it. You can kind of see it floating on the top of my water here because they're so, so light particles, the, the mica. You can see it moving around. Okay, so let me see. Um, try that. A little appetite. 
This is Blue Appetite. Blue Appetite. Let's go ahead and try Blue Appetite. We got a couple more minutes, and then. So you can see that it granulates really quickly. Oh, really? The green fuchsia wins with you. That's Kristen. Yeah, the appetite, both the green and the blue appetite are, are just really awesome granulators. And let's try the sodalite. So, sodalite right here. Sodalite comes from Yavapai Pai County. Yavapai Pai County is where you find the Grand Canyon and you find Red Rock, Arizona. You see that? Really pretty color. I was driving in Red Rock Country and I saw this um, along the side of the road where they were excavating, and so I took four or five pieces of it back to the um, company with me, and Ron and I tested it out and. Uh, we liked it, so then we found um, a source in Arizona to buy it from, and we've been making it kind of like ever since. It's just a interesting, interesting color. And again, one thing we'll talk about as we have, as we go and, and go further, we'll talk about surface tension and why some colors run in and then others kind of repel. And that's all due with um, surface tension. And I can see if I can pick those up. Just testing for staining, how high, how high of a staining it is. You, you know, can you pick it up or not pick it up? Um, we can see as we start to dry our um, fuchsite and our red fuchsite and our green fuchsite, you can start seeing, and even the kyanite, you can start seeing that sparkling to start to happen. You can see that mica staining right at the surface. So it's pretty interesting. Okay, well, so we did this today. There we go, we did these. Let me throw that on the ground. We did these. Garnet, Serpentine, Purpurite, Rhodonite, Lapis, Piemontite. And we did this one. This is our um, lunar black, our tourmaline. This is our green appetite. This is our hematite violet. This is our hematite. And this is our kyanite. I don't know, Sandra. Um, 
I'm just I'm always asked what paper I'm using, so I just, I just make sure I tell you what it is. Um, you just want a paper that has good sizing, so we can see here it's not seeping through. So the sizing is, uh, from a sizing standpoint, it seems like it's pretty good. Um, but you also don't want one that sucks all of the um, the water in because you'll lose vibrancy. And that's just that's just personal preference. Um, I mean, I love this area in here. Just that's so cool. Just so cool. So I don't know, I think it's like every, everything else, everybody has their favorite brush and their favorite paper. And I think just what, you know, bottom line, it's um, it's just what works for you. There's, I don't think there's any kind of a wrong, it's just what, what works for you. Okay, everybody, so I didn't do all of them. We'll do all of the rest of them and finish up next week. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I always enjoy being with you. It makes the time go by so quickly. I love your questions. Don't ever feel like you can't ask a question. I may not always know the answer, but I will get the answer. So you can leave it on the site even when I'm done and I log off. You can always go back in and uh, post a question and I will see it and I will answer it next time. I love questions. I know many of you um, have been with me for a long time and, and know almost all the answers. Um, for those of you that are new, um, I love questions, so please ask any questions that you have. We will go through all of the colors. You'll know um, you'll know about surface tension. You'll know about C Lab colors. You'll know how to read the color chart. You'll know the different families, whether it's a, 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 a pyrrole, a perylene, a quinacridone, a cadmium. You'll know the luminescence and all the families within the luminescence. We'll go over those. So by the end, you're going to be um, very knowledgeable. Um, about the things that you use or as knowledgeable as you choose to be. Again, for some, um, that doesn't really matter. But we'll also we'll also look at all the colors. Now, from an artist standpoint, I mean, just looking at colors is just kind of such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And we will end up painting every single color out. So with that, I want to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you. I will be um, doing this again, the same thing tomorrow at 1030. And then next week, we will just finish off the rest of the Primatex. Thank you all. Um, I wish you health and happiness, and please take care. Bye-bye, everybody.